Hello friends, I am Fida Instructor Atul Dahale and welcome to my YouTube channel. Today we are going to see a very amazing as well as a very simple game and in this game Sallow Flower who is playing with the black pieces played amazing chess. Right into the opening he offers queen trade to his opponent and his opponent trades the queen and after that queenless middle game starts and in that queenless middle game Sallow Flower Okay, Sallow Flower exchanges one piece after another, but he had a clear idea of which pieces he need to keep on the board and which key pieces he need to exchange from the board. And many a times it, this kind of confusion happens with us also, like what to play in such endgame. That's why we try to keep the pieces on the board, especially the queen and try to checkmate our opponent with some tactics. But there are some exceptions and this is what we are going to see in this game. So without further delay, let's get started with the game. But before we go further, I would like to tell you that don't forget to like this video and subscribe to my channel if you are not done it till now okay in this game dominic was white sallow flower was black the game was played in 1935 in rosasas okay so the game started with e4 c5 sicilian defense you can say knight f3 e6 well this is going to be a very interesting sicilian match now he plays something which is not really common these days he plays c4 and he says like okay I might be going into the Meroxibind kind of structures. Here, black plays knight c6, d4, c into d4, knight into d4. Well, knight of 6. Here, if, okay, if white decides to play in a normal Meroxibind kind of a structure, then he can go for knight c3 and the game might proceed with something like, uh, maybe you can say bishop e7 or bishop b4 or even if you want to play completely then a6 and uh, this kind of followed by queen c7 bishop e7 d6 this kind of all ideas are there white white will be putting his pieces on bishop e3 bishop e2 castle f3 queen d2 rook d1 and so on but the players were in a different kind of uh, generation you can say at that time it was not that much uh, invented or that much progressed in the opening theory that's why white decided to play knight capture c6 now black has two options one is that he can capture b takes c6 okay but that will not be that much great option for him because this position will lead to some kind of exchanges after d5 maybe you can say like that knight c3 might be played here and black will continue the position maybe bishop b4 and so on okay we will not get into that detail but what happened in the game is like d into c6 was played and sallow flower is offering queen exchange in this position why yes why well he will be getting some kind of uh, small things in the coming end game you can say or queenless end game okay middle game of course but uh, it is going to be converted into the end game very soon so king takes d8 now the queens are off the board and we need to plan something nicely here so white plays f3 supporting the pawn on uh, e4 square and now in this position blacks understand something that okay his bishop on c8 is not having that much uh, great square so first of all he needs to activate the bishop that's why he plays e5 move obviously with the idea of playing bishop to e6 square correct now once the bishop will be moving to that square black will be putting the king to c7 square this rook might come to d8 square okay and white spaces although they are kind of good you cannot say like they are bad or anything but they will not be having clear targets in the position but white uh, black will be having good targets we'll see that movement don't uh, rush i will be coming to that position also bishop e3 was played to get out of the d file he plays king c7 in this position and white plays a3 obviously with the idea of playing b4 at some point and he is even stopping bishop b4 kind of pinning things in this position so now what to do well in this position black decided to exchange one of the pieces and which piece you should exchange in this position yeah you are right about this thing that if you compare the pieces then your answer will be clear to you in this position white has this bad bishop okay why it is bad because it is surrounded by his own pawns and that those pawns are on the light square his only good bishop is the dark square bishop okay so our moral duty in such positions is to exchange the dark square bishop that's why sallow flower plays knight d7 with the idea of playing bishop b c5 in this position now knight d2 is played 
Now let's suppose you play bishop c5 as per your plan and if you play bishop c5 then white might get a chance to play bishop take c5, knight take c5, then b4, the knight will go back maybe to e6 square and now c5 and the bishop which was not having that great future now will be eyeing towards the c4 square and it will be at a very fine position. Another thing is that the knight might be jumping to c4 as well as d6 square and I think white has solved his all problems. So, Salaflower was very quick to understand what is white's plan. He stops it with a5 move. After a5 move, white plays bishop e2. And now, to further stop all these two pawns, he plays a4 move. We know this thing that this is called as the freezing move because now whenever white plays b pawn, a into b3 will be played and the pawn on a3 will be very very weak. So here king f2 was played and now here comes the move bishop c5 which we were waiting since long time. Bishop takes c5, knight takes c5 and after this section just you can say that the knight on c5 is very very well placed because there is no b4 move, there is no d4 move on the board and there is no one which can dislodge the knight from the c5 square. Okay, so white plays rook a c1 and now it's time to connect the rooks. So black plays bishop e6, rook h d1. Okay, you can say like both the sides are bringing the rooks in the game. So black also brings the rook with rook h d8. And now king e3. Now what to do? Well, the d file is the main file in this position. And we know this thing that rooks belongs to the open file. So rightly, black plays rook d7, going for the doubling of the rook on the d file. Okay, that is a very clear cut plan in this position. You can say g3 is played by white. Obviously, he wants to play f4 in this position. But okay, we can simply play rook a d8, bring the rook in the game. And white played f4. Well, in this position, black decided to go into something complicated that we might be looking at very soon okay so here first of all he captures on f4 g into f4 and now in this position when everything seems quite okay that you might say like the white's king is in the center that's how it should be because this is the end game the king should be in the center but we should not forget this thing that chase is also about tactics okay it is not just the positional thing it is also about the tactics and now in this position black goes for the tactics whence his position is quite right for it because it's all the pieces you can say bishop on e6 knight on c5 rooks are there and the king is also very well placed plus the pawn on a4 everything is perfect then only he goes for the tactic that is rook d3 check well, what is really happening? If you go back, obviously, I will just capture the knight on d2. So you need to capture it. And after the capture here, if the king goes to e2 square, we have this beautiful move that is bishop g4 check. And if king e1 or king f2, whatever we play, we can still wait in this position. We don't even need to capture it once and for all. Okay, if you capture, that is okay. Even if you don't capture, that is also fine for you. What you can do in this position is like you can go for the pawn maybe with the knight e4. Okay, let me uh, check for a while. Rook d4 can be played so that we can capture the pawn on e4 for sure. That will be much more better because if you play e5, then obviously the pawn on f4 is falling plus knight d3 check and knight into c1 is also coming. So white will be in trouble. Okay, so in the game king e2 was not played for obvious reasons. He plays king f2 not getting into the diagonal of this bishop. And now, and now here in this position, bishop g4 comes into the center. We might say like rook might move, but rook will not be able to move because the knight on d2 will be hanging. So he plays e5, okay. This is a similar variation which we were actually looking at. And now bishop takes d1, rook takes d1. And now here, the knight on d2 is pinned and he takes the advantage of this thing. Okay, he could have gone for knight b3, but if he plays knight b3, then king e2 is coming and there will not be any progress from the black side so first of all he attacks his opponent's pawn and he goes for very slowly he plays knight e6 the pawn is attacked so it comes forward he again attacks the pawn on f5 the pawn comes forward and now this pawn on f6 is in the range of this king and what you need to do you need to convert the game into the pawn end game so he plays knight b3 the king supports the knight on d2 and after rook takes d2 rook takes d2 knight takes d2 king d2 and king d6 the resulting pawn end game is just uh, winning for black because the pawn on f6 will be falling he will be having one extra pawn and that's how well i hope that you enjoyed the way this game was played and you will surely subscribe to my channel and like this video 
Till that moment, we'll be meeting next time. Bye-bye.